it's a moment where we see Ma Rainey in her element. She has power. She has a career. She has success. She has a showbiz empire, if you will. And, and it's a chance for, for us to see how slavishly devoted her fans are to her, how she is, she is their voice and, and, and gives a, a, a meaning to their lives through the song that she sings. In the 10th show, Ma's commute, it, to me, it's church. It's a, it's a preacher and their congregation. In, in Chicago, it's showbiz. That Friday night, I saw Viola's Ma Rainey in complete command of her audience. Ma Rainey this morning, didn't know which way to go. And they are single-handedly the best group of extras I have ever oh seen my God. in my awesome. entire life. And I know for a fact that Anne Roth explained to each and every one of them sort of the origins of yeah. all of their costumes, everything that they had on them. She went down the row. I mean, down I, the row. Yep, yep. So, when I pulled up, there was Anne explaining one. This is your first introduction to Ma Rainey in her element. I was surprised at how it made me tap into the part of myself that I usually hide from. Mm, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not a flashy girl at all. For some reason, it just catapulted me out of that. Everything that I had, everything that I had in me, my sexuality, my confidence, everything mm -hmm. was in vast display and had to be. It was a liberating scene. Didn't know which way to go. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I went into acting too, is to be catapulted back in time and not to just bustles and corsets, but back in time where it was culturally specific, back in time where I saw a place for myself. Daddy, daddy, please come home to me. And George, wasn't there like this one woman that was really, really old and you asked oh, she was, her she, We just got the close up of her. She's yeah. 90, 90, she was 97. And I sent one of the second ADs over to say, I got a close up of you, you can go home. And she says, oh, no, I'm not leaving. This is what it felt like when I was young. Oh, my way, crazy as I can be. The movie really um, came alive that night. I remember it vividly. When Viola, as Ma Rainey, came on to the set, you could feel this palpable energy that I have never felt before on any movie I've ever worked on. And, and we had them. And Viola kept them all night long. And being in this big tent, and having all this, the smell of the straw, the, the hay bales, it just, it, it was transporting. And Viola just held them in her hand. She held the audience in her hand the whole night. Viola, could you feel the audience during that whole thing? Yes, I could feel the audience because I had to look at them. I had to <laughs> hit them. I had to, I had to flirt with all the dudes in, in the audience, you know, as a part of, you know, my act. There was this moment where Viola as Ma and the, the extras as people in Barnesville, Georgia met. And the energy exchange was so pure. Going from the tent to the stage, by the time she gets to the blue dress, she is trying to appeal to the masses. I wanted to challenge the notion of something being a little imperfect. I wanted authenticity with the makeup. And, you know, she was described as being someone when she performed that under the lights, it, her makeup looked like it was melting, like grease paint. So I wanted to challenge a woman getting up there who looked like whatever happened to baby Jane. Because I think that people have an idea of what a star looks like, 
and it's not specific. You know, the universal is in the specificity. And so what would the specific look like during the Chitlin Circuit shows when you don't have a Sergio Lopez as your makeup artist? When you have heat and no air conditioning, when you've probably been under those lights for Lord knows how long, when you don't have any sense of really how to put on makeup and it's melting and all of that, that's what I wanted people to see. That's the intro that I wanted. I didn't want to assimilate for a white audience in order for you to be able to digest Ma Rainey. If I'm there, I want you to be there. <laughs> yeah. Hence the makeup, hence the gold teeth, because she had a mouthful of gold teeth. She did. You could see it in the pictures. Um, and her wig was made of horse hair. That's just the truth. She's putting on a show at the Grand Theater. And so that's happening. And so the dancers are there and the band is playing. But that's not the story that we're watching. The spectacle is there so that therefore on a certain look, when, when Ma throws a look, then we cut to the dancers going as a, as a percussive visual element to accent the moment so the audience is clear, oh, that matters. So I'm using the rhythms to enhance the, the personality dynamics that we are just starting to learn. I wanted to, by the end of this whole sequence, for the audience to understand the story dynamics that were at play before one line of dialogue is heard. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs>